G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. I have got um, a new mould. <laughs> I know, I just can't stop making moulds. I made this ice mould initially with um, like ice cubes type effect around the edge. Um, and a lot of you wanted me to do in the bigger size, so I did. There it is. That's the, this is the bigger ice. So large ice, small ice. Okay, <laughs> I'll link this one down in my description if you want this one. Um, it's about 15 centimetres across. So point to point. Um, oh, look, I'm not sure what it is in inches divided by 2.5. Now, um, you know how I've been doing fairy flowers? We've all been trying fairy flowers lately, and we've been trying to get the white blob out of the center. Um, and, you know, sometimes I use some little crushed um, rocks and sometimes I use glitter and sometimes it just moves and it's off center. And I thought, uh, and, and, you know, can I also put a sticker in the middle and that'll stay there? And I'm thinking, how about if I try some chameleon flakes? And you could do this with any sort of powder, really. Um, now I'm going blues today. That one says blue. <laughs> it says blue. So I'm just I'm just thinking out loud here, okay? So what I thought I would do, so that my middle doesn't move, I'm gonna dust these into the center. Oh gosh. They do fly away. They do. They do fly away. I'll I'll have to tidy up my edges around there later on. Look, look at it! It just it's just spreading everywhere. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know what would be easier? If I got a bit of paper towel, let me just do this. I'm gonna get a bit of paper towel. <laughs> oh. And um, I'm just gonna snip that off. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at the size of it. All right, that didn't work. <laughs> let's try again. You know what I'm trying to do, don't you? Let's let's try again. Let's make a smaller one. Let's just get a piece of paper towel and um, let's make a little hole. A little hole. There we go. We can always make it bigger. I can't make it smaller. Uh, okay, that's that's pretty good. Now I should just start the video again, shouldn't I? Gosh. Anyway, look, we're done now. We're done. We're started. I'm not going to be able to get this off now, am I? Mm. Oh, look, it doesn't matter if there's a couple of little stray pieces, I guess. I guess. Or I could just wipe them with a, a baby wipe. But anyway, what I, what I was trying to do, very poorly, I might add, and you, you guys always learn from me as to what not to do. But um, I thought, what if I put down my centre first? Um, because... You know when you're putting down your, your glitter center first and then you have to pour everything in? It just goes everywhere. So I thought, well, how about if I do this? Now, you've got to be really careful not to wipe your mold, okay? You can pat dry, but don't wipe. Otherwise, you're going to get these smudgy streaks because silicone picks up absolutely everything. So if you have to dry it, just be really careful. Just pat, 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 pat. All right, I think that's in the middle. All right, let, let's try this. I am getting to the video, I promise. I am getting there. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a little hole bigger here. Okay, so this is what I'm going to try and do. This is what they, this is what the surgeons do, don't they, when they're operating? Make a little, make a little hole so you can see what you're doing. So place it where you want it, and then. Hopefully this will stop my little bits flying everywhere. So, oh my gosh, that was a bit of an ordeal, wasn't it? So let's just put our little centre in with these little flakes. Now, like I said, I don't mind if a few go astray because I don't want like a, you know, a definite ring. So I'm going to kind of try to blur the edges a little bit by dotting. Hopefully I'm in the middle. I'll put them in the middle. All right, now, I think that's, how's that look? Is that kind of centered? Anyway, you can put in as much or as little as you want. 
Um, try and get it as centered as possible. Trying to blur it a little bit. Just, just, just for something different, okay? So this is the blue in the Chameleon Flakes by Let's Resin. I will link Let's Resin down below. I'll use that paper towel again <laughs> to clean my, my bits off. All right. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, the last couple of videos I did, I was using my new, my new technique. Now, I say my new technique, and I'm a bit unsure whether or not to say that, but you know when you do, if you've done the resincourses.com course, the basic kind of courses, they're, they're all pretty much the same, where you have... You have some resin in the bottom, whether it's a plain colour or it's a dirty pour, but you have some in there. And then you get um, your white or your coloured paste and you draw patterns, you do dots, you do whatever, and then whatever, and then you put a clear push over the end, okay? So there's that's the basis um, of the Let's Resin, not Let's Resin, Resin Courses course, okay? Um, and then there's lots of different variations depending on how you pour them. There's the dragon flower, there's the fairy flower, there's the chrysanthemum, there's, oh gosh, um, Gratian wind flower. There's, I have, I don't know, I haven't looked at them all. I've only, I've only done a couple of the courses, but there's lots of them. So I have found a different way of pouring, like a different sort of pattern um, that I think is, not the same as any of the courses that Micah does in her resincourses.com. So I am calling it the Fantasy Flower. And thank you very much to Petra G because she helped me figure out the name for it. So I'm calling it the Fantasy. And basically it's a colour, a metallic, and then a black push. Okay, so this is just my variation on resin courses. I'm not trying to steal their thunder or anything. It's just a... a pouring way that I've come up with and that's what I'm calling it just to differentiate between all their different types of flowers okay so I hope you're okay with that I hope it's okay right so I've got my little center in I'm going to mix up my resin um, and we'll get started righto I have my resin all mixed up and decanted I've got some in here with some bloom pigment paste white pigment paste it's I would say that's just opaque that's that one and now in my cup over here I have got the whole bind in Danthrin blue that's that one um, I know it looks very dark in there it's still transparent though you can see through the stick nice nice dark blue if it wasn't dark enough I'd add a little bit of black but it's it's dark um, now the uh, I've only really got one silver my other silvers that's the let's resin silver mica powder my other silvers um i just gonna be careful to, where i open it <laughs> fly away everywhere my other silvers are metallic not, me not metallic metal silvers so they're quite heavy and they, they sink and they don't spread as much so i'm going to just try this one i'm going to put just a, a scoop in there We'll see how that works. So I've done pink and gold already. I've done purple and bronze. This is my blue and silver. Um, how about, oh, how about like a green and copper next? So yeah, I don't really have a silver, any other silver mica powders as such. They're all, um, they're all metal powders. It's not really looking opaque enough. You don't want it to be too, too strong. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be overpowering. And you're not going to see your blue. But, um, yeah, I don't know whether the silver works the same as the other colours, the gold and the bronze I've used previously, but I guess we'll find out. We shall find out. And then this is going to be my push at the end, my clear, but I am just going to add two drops of black. This is also by Holbein. Put your finger over it before you shake it. Oh gosh. Once I didn't, I forgot that it was open. Oh, 
I shook it. Yeah, not not good, not good. One, two, just two little drops. Okay. All right. I'll give that a stir. So it's going to be. It's probably going to look darker in the cup because it's, you know, deeper in there. It's a deeper cup, but it's still going to be quite transparent. So. You know those gorgeous striations that you get when you mix a mica powder with an ink? See how still it's really transparent. So that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm this is the fantasy of it. It's the fantasy flower, you guys. And hopefully, hopefully it will work again. <laughs> I've done it twice. It it should work thrice, shouldn't it? <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Okay, it's nice and mixed up. Give these a little torch. So if you haven't seen my other fantasy flowers, I will link one of them in the um, up above shortly for you. At the end of the video, I'll, I'll link it. Um, I should better pour my white into the piping bag first before I get started. So it's basically just a puddle pour. I don't think it's a particularly difficult technique. Um, I was amazed when I did it the first time. <laughs> I thought, wow, that's just incredible. Let's try it again. And it worked again. And I thought, oh, gosh. Because, you know, some, some of these techniques, it's kind of one step forward, two steps back. I can do it one day and then I try it and again and it doesn't work. <laughs> or I try different resin and different inks. It all makes a difference. Now, I'm not going to cut that. I'm just going to leave it there for a minute. You just sit there for a minute. White. And we're going to start with, did I torch that? I don't think I torched that one. I'm going to start with just pouring in this gorgeous, gorgeous navy blue. I'm calling it a navy blue. Looks more of a ultramarine blue there, doesn't it, when it's out against the white mould. So I think, but I think it's, it's a pretty simple... I think it's a pretty simple technique to do. So feel free to, to give it a try. Now I always like to just give my mold a little bit of a jiggle just to release any air bubbles. Be really, really careful when you're torching because you know you only got very, very thin amount of resin in there and the heat can and will go through, burn your mold and then you'll fuse your resin to your um, silicone. Right, so puddle pour. Just like so. Get all that out. Um, as I said, I'm hoping it's opaque enough. The other two that I used for this same technique were um, Pearl X marker powders by Jacquard. Um, and I guess each one's a bit different. Oh, but look, it's done it! See how the silver's going underneath the blue and the blue's coming over the top? That that's, tends to be a good sign, you guys. Tends to be a good sign. So, yay. Look at that. All right. Um, no, gosh, I nearly poured that in. Don't pour this in yet. Now we're going to pipe our design, okay? You can use a piping bag. You can pour out of your little cup if you want to. Um, you can do a pipette. You can do a needle nose bottle. You can do whatever you like. Oh, gosh, I've resin my scissors together. <laughs> Decent size hole, I guess. Bigger than what I would do for a 3D balloon, probably 5 mil. Um, oh, and while I'm doing this, while I'm doing my little spiral, I will tell you about the resin I've used. I have used the Platinum Super Clear. Uh, it's my favourite for this particular technique. It's a medium viscosity, um, kind of like... The Art Pro Viscosity, I, I guess. Um, similar to Platinum's 360 Plus, that sort of tech, um, consistency or viscosity. But it has a longer working time where the Platinum 360 Plus tends to flash cure on me if I try to pour it sort of this deep um, yeah, just and I need I need the length, the working time, to be extended for all these sorts of techniques, so that the the resin can keep moving, which is what you want. You want it to keep moving. 
and make it gorgeous little design. I'm going to use all of this because I can. Make that a bit thicker. There we go. So that's easy, isn't it? So far, so good. Nothing too difficult, really. Okay, so now the next thing we do is, well, I'll just give a real quick little torch again. And you can see how that bloom pigment paste is blooming already. It's spreading, it's doing its thing. It's just incredible. So the last thing we do now is just with our clear, I'm calling it a clear, it's very lightly tinted with the black. We're just going to pour that in the middle. This is the push, okay? It's called a push. We're just pushing it in. I'm not going to drizzle it in. We're not going to go from a pile. We're just going to find the middle and dump. Nice and quick. Just dump. Like so. Um, as you can see, I haven't filled the mould totally to the top because um, I just want to use the same ratio I did last time because it worked. <laughs> and I want to test these colours. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So yeah, I haven't um, I haven't filled it up all the, all the way, and I, I haven't used this mold before. It's the first time I've used this mold, so I'm not exactly sure how much it holds, but obviously it holds quite a lot. It's deeper. Um, it is. I think it is deeper than my other live edge molds. So that's that's it. I told you it was easy. Now we just wait for it to close up. Um, I'll pack all my my little goodies away. And yeah, we just wait for that to, to close up. If you weren't doing your, um, you know, dusting your center, uh, if you were putting your stones in or something, then you would do it now. But uh, like I said, I just want to try and see what happens with <laughs> that little bit of chameleon powder. Just heating those sides a little bit. Um, and that's it. So, yeah, wish me luck. Hope the silver works the same as um, the gold and the bronze did. <laughs> I'll deal with the gloves later. <laughs> all right, I'll see you all for the demold. But um, it's looking pretty. It's looking pretty at the moment. Looks like some kind of rock formation, doesn't it? So the resin will keep moving for at least half an hour, an hour, up to an hour, between half an hour and an hour, I guess. Um, and close up a little bit more. If you're worried about your centre not closing up, you can suck a little bit out with um, with a syringe. But I just want to leave it and see what it does. Give it some time to move. Don't rush your resin. All right, see you soon. Right, oh, it has cured my little centre. <laughs> is a bit off center but I don't think it'll matter I think the other side will be okay so let's have a little look I should have probably filled up a little bit more but I didn't know how much it was going to take <laughs> this is just my prototype this one so it's probably a little bit deeper than what it will be but not by much all right <gasps> gosh I hope it works. What do you think? Do you think it's going to work? It looks kind of wispy. And we've got some blue. We've got some white. We've got some silver. <laughs> we've got some black. <gasps> All right. Let's have a little look and see if it's worked. I hope so. <gasps> oh, wow. I oh, love it. Look at that, you guys. Look at my centre. Look at my centre. I don't have a big white blob. And just that, can you see that little bit of glimmer there from that um, chameleon flake? Yes. Oh, wow. And it's it's where I put it. Like, you don't have to worry about what the back's doing. Like, even though my center's off center there, because I put the center where I wanted it with my little brush, it's 
stayed. Wow. I don't really see a lot of silver. What's that? I don't see a lot of silver. It's kind of blended. I mean, it does shimmer. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. It's it's dark now. <laughs> I'll have to wait till tomorrow and um, maybe I can have a look in the in the sunshine. See if I can pick up the silver. Um, but I can see, like, you can kind of see a little bit of silver through the blue there. But it's, you don't have to particularly see the brightness of the silver. The silver is more to create these striations, the mica powder. Like I said, with the, the um, balance between the mica powder and the ink um, and then the clear resin, it, it creates these gorgeous blooms. So pretty. It, different shaped to my other one. Not sure why. <laughs> They're all different. They're all different. Oh, wow. It's really pretty, though. Loving my centre. So what do you think? Do you like that centre? I think it's really pretty. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to take you for a little walk around the studio because it's dark and um, I'd rather wait for tomorrow um, when I can get some nice daylight shots for you because I can't really yeah well, I'm just getting reflections of ring lights so um, I'll leave it there and then I will take some photos tomorrow for you